Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you all about simple interest. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate simple interest using the simple interest formula. Go ahead and get out your notes and get ready to learn. There are a couple different kinds of interest like compound interest and simple interest. In this lesson, we're just going to focus on simple interest. Before we get started, let's look at what we already know about saving money. In this problem, it says Carl just turned 13 and is now old enough to open a savings account. Previously, he used a piggy bank to save his money. Consider the advantages and disadvantages to using a savings account over a piggy bank. A few things that I know about a savings account is that a savings account is going to earn interest, but it's a little bit more difficult to get your money out if you need it immediately. Then a few things I know about a piggy bank is that you're not going to earn interest off of that, but the money is at home with you. Next, look, let's look at the definition for simple interest. Simple interest is entrance, interest earned only on the principal or the original amount deposited in the account. It is earned over a period of time and is written as a percentage. To solve for simple interest, we're going to use a formula that is written down here, I equals PRT. That right now, though, is just a bunch of variables, and we need to label what these variables are. The I is interest. The P is principal or the amount that was put into the account. R is the rate, specifically written as a decimal. And T is time in years. When solving simple interest problems, we can just find these different pieces of information in the problem and plug them into this formula to solve for the simple interest. Let's try that in some problems below. The directions at the top say use the simple interest formula to determine the amount of interest earned. Then find the total value of the account, assuming no other deposits or withdrawals were made. Looking at these directions, that means I need to find two different things. First, I'm going to set up my formula. I know that the principal is the amount of money that was put into the account in this problem, $900. Next, we need our rate written as a decimal. The rate is 4%. To change a percent into a decimal, we move our decimal two places to the left. In this case, we'll have 0 0.04. Finally, we need our time in years for this problem that is 20 years. And then we can just use our calculator to t multiply 900 times 0.04 times 20 to get an interest of $720. Finally, we want the total value of the account. So we're going to take the original amount that was deposited in there and add our interest of $720. This gives us a final value of $1,620 in the account. Do the next problem together. The problem says a $5,600 deposit for 45 years at a simple interest rate of 3%. I'm going to use my same simple interest formula and just plug in the values that I need. First, I need the principal, which is $5,600. That's how much money was put into the account in the beginning. Our rate is 3% change that into a decimal and finally our years is 45. Next I can use my calculator to multiply this together and get $7,560 as our interest. Not done though because our problem wants the total value in the account so I need to take our original deposit of $5,600 and add the interest we just found. This leaves us with a final value of $13,160 in the account. I want you to pause the video and try the next two problems on your own and then press play when you're ready to check. Question three says Danielle borrows $2,500 from the bank at 6% simple interest for five years. How much is Danielle going to pay in interest? So far, we've looked at problems where we earn interest, but you can also need to pay interest. This can happen when you buy a house or when you buy a car. You're paying interest. In this problem, we're paying interest on a bank loan. Regardless of whether we're earning or paying the interest, we can use the same simple interest formula. My principal in this case is how much I borrowed, which is $2,500. Then we take our principal, multiply it by the rate as a decimal, and multiply that by the years. This problem only has one step because it says how much is she going to have to pay in interest. She's going to have to pay $750 in interest. If we wanted to figure out the total amount that she's paying back, she has to pay back the $2,500 as well. So we would add the $2,500 plus the interest of $750. Our last problem says Terry invests $6,000 in a CD at an annual interest rate of 7%. This is just a type of savings account. Um, so we're going to figure out what his investment will be worth at the end of the six months. So we're going back to a problem where we're earning interest. Regardless, we're going to use the same formula. One thing I noticed is that you might not have noticed is that we are looking at the end of six months. The time, however, in this formula needs to be in years. Since six months is half a year, I used 0 0.5 as my time in years. Once I plug this into my calculator, I get that my interest is 210. 
However, the final problem says what will his investment be worth at the end of six months. At the end of six months, he's going to have the $6,000 as well as the interest of two ten dollars to have a total investment of $6,210. Let's look at some other problems together. In these problems, we're going to be given different pieces of information, and we might be solving for a different piece rather than just the simple interest. Regardless, we're going to use the same formula and just plug in the pieces of information that we know. I wrote my formula interest equals principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by the time. Now I'm going to look at my problem at the pieces of information that I have and substitute them in to my formula. In the problem, I know that $800 deposit is my principal, so I've color coded that in blue. That's the initial amount that was put into the account. Next, I see that 24 months, that is the time. However, I've got to remember I want time in years. 24 months is going to transfer to two years. And then we see that we earned $200 in interest. So that is typically what we've been solving for. This leaves my unknown as the R or the rate. Next, I've just rewritten the formula, substituting the pieces of information in where they go. And I've left them color coded so you can see where each piece came from. All this left to do is solve. On the left side of the equation, there's not much that I can do since I'm left with just the 200. On the right side of the equation though, I can go ahead and multiply the 800 times the two. We learned about properties that told us that order didn't matter in multiplication, so I can do 800 times two and leave the variable there. 800 times two is 1600. Finally, I've got to get that R by itself Right now it's being multiplied, so I'm going to do the inverse and divide by 1600 on both sides. This leaves me with 0 0.125. However, this is our rate written as a decimal, and typically when we're talking about what rate, we want to use a percentage. So I'm going to change this decimal into a percent by moving my decimal two places to the right, which will give us 12.5%. I'm also going to go ahead and look for the total value. For this, I know that originally I would put $800 into the account and I earned $200 in interest, which will give me a total value of $1,000. The next problem says a $1,595 deposit for 10 years at a simple interest rate of 8%. For this problem, I know that my principal is how much money I put in. That's the $1,595. My rate is 8%, but we want that as a decimal and then my time is 10 years. So for this problem, I am solving for interest like we did on the last page. Doing the multiplication in my calculator, I find that interest is $1,276. And finally, we want the total value, so I take my initial deposit and add the interest. This gives me a final total value of $2,871. Question 7 says a deposit earns $102 after 36 months at a simple interest rate of 5% bottom of this problem says we're solving for time, but we're actually not. Once I go through and look at the problem, I see that I don't know how much money was initially deposited, in, deposited into the account or our principal. After going through the problem, I know that our interest is $102. Our time is 36 months. Remember that we want this as time in years. 36 months is equivalent to three years. And then finally, we have our interest rate of 5% or 0.05. I can so solve for my unknown P, which is the principal in this case, and I end up finding that that is 680. For this problem, we also need the total value. So I'm going to take that principal, that's what we initially put into the account of 680, and add that to the interest that was earned, which was 102, to get a total value of $782. Let's look at the next problem. It says Reese made a deposit into an account that earns 8% simple interest. After eight years, Reese had earned $400. How much was Reese's initial deposit? I'm going to go ahead and use the same formula. Again, this time my unknown is the principal. So I've left that as a variable. You notice that a lot of times I put what I am substituting or plugging in into parentheses. Remember that when we have parentheses in an equation, that just signifies that we've got multiplication happening. This is P times 0 0.8 times 8. The parentheses are just there to kind of separate each number. Once I solve this equation, I get that my principal is $625. A lot of times we can think about problems too 
when we get the answer on whether or not they make sense. In this case, it makes sense that I started with $625 and that I earned $400 in interest. Typically, what you earn in interest is going to be less than what you put in to begin with. Especially with a percent, like 8% in a time frame of 8 years. If the problem went on to ask what the total amount was in his account at the end, what would his final amount be? If we were looking to find his final account balance, we would take the initial principal of 625 and add the interest earned of 400. Let's look at the last problem. I want you to pause the video and try this on your own and then press play when you're ready to check with me. This problem says Jude deposited $550 into an account that earned simple interest. And after 11 years, the interest in the account was $484. What was the simple interest rate? So again, I use the same formula I substitute in the pieces that I know. In this case, we're looking for the R. Once I have my formula set up, I can solve. When I solve this, I get 0 0.08, but we have to remember that we're looking for the interest rate as a percent, so I've got to move that decimal two places to the right, and my interest rate percent here is 8%. Finally, this last question says, explain the benefit of investing your money into an account that earns simple interest. In the beginning of this lesson, we talked about using a savings account versus um, keeping your money in a piggy bank at home. Think about some reasons why it would be a good idea to put your money into an account that earns interest. You may have had a variety of answers. However, the one that I think about is that when I'm putting money into an account that's earning interest, that money is sitting there unused anyway, and I'm just earning money off of it so that when I go to use it, there will be more in the account. However, if I chose to use a piggy bank, then the amount would not increase as time passes. Okay, guys, that's it. Let me know. Do you prefer winter or summer? Today we went over simple interest. Now you should be able to calculate simple interest using the simple interest formula. We were also able to use the simple interest formula to find either our principal or our rate or the time depending on the information that was given to us. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye guys!